uh, Honorable Senator. Uh, uh, speaker. Honorable Mutuse, Honorable Speaker of the uh, Senate. Honorable Mutuse. Um, yes, you say you're an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Yes. When were you admitted? In the year 2018. 2018? Yes. So you've been practicing for six years? Indeed. According to the Senate website I'm reading here, between 2013 and 2022, you are the Chief of Staff at the County Government of Machakos. Is that correct? That is correct. So from 2018 to 2022, you could not practice law as a public officer. Is that correct? That is true. So you have not done any conveyancing transactions. Is that correct? That is not correct. How have you done conveyancing transactions as a public officer? I have academic, professional, and experience in conveyancing. Academic, not practical. Professional and practical experience in conveyancing. How did you do conveyancing while working for Machakos County Government? I was not in private practice, but I am involved in many... Yeah, name one, name one, one transaction, for example. Well, maybe you can't remember now. Maybe what? I cannot remember at the moment. You can't remember a single transaction in your illustrious law career you've done. Let's move on. Uh, yes, Honorable Mutuse. Yes. On what party were you elected when you came to Parliament? Mandeleo Chapter Party. Mandeleo Chapter Party. Yes. And um, you were elected uh, in the year 2022. Indeed. Is it correct to state that Mandeleo Chapter Party is a member of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition? Yes, it is correct. Did you sign a coalition agreement to form part of that Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition? Yes, we did. You did. Do you have any role, any specific role in Mindeleo Chap Chap Party? No, I don't have. You don't have any role? Yes. I want us to deal with grounds. I believe um, um, your counsel led you on what he said jointly were grounds one, five, and six. Ground one and five and six deal with the utterances you stated. And let me get some facts straight from you. You said one of the things that vexes you the most about these utterances, you mentioned sensationally Rwanda, you mentioned Sudan, you mentioned various countries having problems. Is that correct? Yes, indeed. And you said that my client, the deputy president, was a DO in Molo during the clashes. I said, it is said that he was a DO in Molo during it the clashes. It is said. Yes. So this is not a fact. Yes or no? It is not correct that he was not a I DO in Molo. I do not know it out of my own information, but it is public information. What do you mean by public information? Either he was a DO or he was not. Can you confirm yes or no? Was he or was he? Or don't you know? He was a DO? He was, no, Molo. Please, let's not waste time. Was he a DO in Molo or was he not, to your knowledge? It is publicly alleged that he was a DO in Molo. To your knowledge, not to the public, to you. Mutuse MP Kibwezi, was he a, a deal in Molo or not, to your knowledge? I believe so. I'm not asking for your belief or imagination. Do you know or do you not know? Well, I do not have it as a matter of fact. Okay, let's move. Now, um, you confirm that you are a member of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition. Yes, indeed. Please go with me, if you will, Yes. to page 417, Honorable Members, 417 of Volume 3 of the Deputy President's documents. That one. And as um, you put a finger there, Honorable Mutuse, Honorable Members of the Senate. Mr. Mutuse, if you'd go with me to page six of volume one, this is the special motion. Volume six. I say that page 417, keep a finger there, page 417 of volume three 
this uh, next year's in support of His Excellency the Deputy President. Yes. And then volume one, which is your motion, at page six of 85. But let's begin with page six of 85. You're there, page six? Yes, I'm there. You're there. Yeah. This is the allegation you see in the middle there, and I'll read for you quickly so that we don't get stuck, mm -hmm. which, which begins with the words, a government is like a company. Can you see that? A government is like a company. You can see that? Yes. I want you to show me where in that paragraph the word tribe, ethnic, Kabila appears, even once. It is not there. Go to page seven. Overleaf. Can you see the sentence beginning? Haiwezekani mtu ambaye alikuwa akikupiga kelele akichunga. Can you see that? Yes. Show me where the word Kabila, tribe, or ethnic, ethnicity appears. It is not there. Paragraph 13. A government is like a company. Can you see that at page uh, seven? Yes. Show me where the word tribe, ethnic, or Kabila appears. It is not there. Let's go to page eight. Sisi lazima tungeangalia njini. Hii serekali ni kampuni na hii ni shares. Sindio, can you see that? Yes, I can see that. Show me where the word tribe, Kabila, ethnic appears. It, does, it doesn't appear. Paragraph 15, does it appear? What? At paragraph 15, at uh, page eight of 85. What, what does not appear? The same words, Kabila, ethnic, tribe. No, they don't appear. They do not appear. Mm. And finally, at paragraph 16, at page 9 of 85. You can see that? Let me read through. I can see, nikuwe nikichunga mambo ya watu wa mulima. Very good. So, mulima is a tribe. Is a region. Is a region. Can you please name for me the counties in that region? Several. Central is not a county. I've said several. Several, there are 10 actually. Um, read them out. Kiambu, mm -hmm. Murana, mm -hmm. Nyeri, mm -hmm. Embu, mm -hmm. Rakanithi, mm -hmm. uh, Meru, mm -hmm. Nandawa, Nakoro, mm -hmm. Lakipia. Lakipia. Mm -hmm. Which other one? The ten, all of them. Okay. Now, do all those ten counties have one tribe? To your knowledge. They do not have one tribe. Thank you. Now, would you agree with me that the government or the party or the coalition that is the majority in the Senate and in the National Assembly is the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition? Yes. So the ruling party is Kenya Kwanzaa. The ruling coalition. Is the ruling coalition. Yes. And they rule because they are a majority. Yes. You agree with that? Indeed. Very good. Now, to your knowledge, if you now go with me to page 417, is a letter, can you see that? Page 417 of volume three yes. of the deputy president's documents. Can you see that? Yes. It is addressed to the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties. Yes. And it is signed by our professional colleague, Professor Kithure Kendike. Can you see that? Council for Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance Coalition. Yes. You can see that? Yes. In the middle is a paragraph beginning with subsequently. Can you please read out for me the parties that were constituent parties of Kenya Kwanzaa? Subsequently, on 12th, April 2022, the following political parties were admitted and signed to join the coalition pursuant to Article 24 of the Coalition Agreement. Chama Chakazi, Communist Party, Devolution Party of Kenya, Economic Freedom Party, Farmers Party, The Service Party, Tujibebe wa Kenya Party, Umoja na Maendeleo Party of Kenya, Democratic Party of Kenya. Thank you. If you go with me to um, the first of those coalition agreements, it is to be found at page 418. Can you see that? Yes, I am there. At the very top there, under the date, who are the constituents, who are the parties that have signed this agreement? 
United Democratic Alliance Party, and Amani National Congress Party, and Ford Kenya Party. Thank you. If you'd go with me to page 420, a few pages from there. Page 420 and there. Mm -hmm. Paragraph C, Article 5, Paragraph C. Please read that out fairly quickly. The validity or legality of this agreement may not be subject to challenge by any founding or future coalition member party or their re respective individual party members before any organ of the coalition. And Paragraph D? Any constitution, rules, regulations, or guidelines, whatever the nomenclature of founding of future member parties, which is not inconsistent with this agreement, is null and void to the extent of the inconsistency. So this is the master agreement of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition. Is that correct, yes or no? It is correct. Thank you. Do you know why these agreements are signed and under what law they are signed? Yes, I know. Please tell us. They are signed under the Political Parties Act to, for various reasons. Number one is... No, I asked you the law. Now, do you know what specific section requires a coalition agreement and what is to enter into a coalition agreement? Well, I not offer it, but I know. Schedule 3, does that ring a bell for you? The schedule 3 is what states what the elements of a coalition agreement. As a member of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition, according to you, yes. Are these agreements of your coalition drawn in accordance with the law? Yes, they are. So they are lawful? Yes, indeed. They are enforceable? Yes, indeed. They are the basis upon which Kenya is governed? Basis upon which the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition is run. Is governing the country? The country is governed by the constitution of Kenya. Correct. But the Kenya Kwanzaa gov uh, uh, government that is governing, these are its constituent documents. This is the foundation of Kenya Kwanzaa. But they are not superior to the constitution. I did not ask for an argument. I asked, is this the foundational constitution? You just read about it saying that it is... Uh, it, is it is the coalition agreement for Kenya Kwanzaa, yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Would you know whether Mandeleo Chap Chap signed any agreement to enter the Kenya Kwanzaa um, coalition? Yes. You did? He did, and they did sign. Are you familiar with the contents of that agreement? Yes, I am. You are? Yes. Are you certain about that? Yes, I know. Very good. Then let's first go to um, the, the documents we're reading here. Let's begin at page 426. Page 426? Yes. I am here. Article 19. Can you please read the heading? Article 19, sharing of county assembly responsibilities, stock leadership. Sharing. Sharing. Very good. Article 20, please read the heading again. Sharing of leadership of parliamentary committees. Sharing. Yes. Let's go to Article 21. Sharing of national government responsibilities. Let us see at Article 21, the functions of the Deputy President is to chair committees over implementation of cabinet decisions and so on. Would you know whether this particular section was implemented or not? The, the, in terms of the functions of the Deputy President? Yes, would you know? Yes, I, I, to the best of my recollection, it was put into effect through an executive order. So that was also implemented? Yes. Go with me to uh, page 428. Page 428? Yes. We are here. F, can you see F at the top there? Yes, I can see F. A and C shall nominate the Prime Cabinet Secretary for appointment by the President of the Republic. Did the leader of ANC, was the leader of ANC nominated and appointed as the Prime Cabinet Secretary? Indeed. That is correct. Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs. You can confirm the name. What's the name? His name is Musalia Mudavadi. Mudavadi. Yes. Very good. And the functions you see at J and I, was that also implemented? Yes, they were implemented. Very good. Let's go to page 429. Page 429, yes. Paragraph L at the top. Paragraph L at the top. Ford Kenya shall nominate the Speaker of the National Assembly for election in accordance with the Constitution. Did Ford Kenya nominate and was the nominee in fact elected as the Speaker of the National Assembly? Indeed. Indeed. That was also implemented? Yes. Very good. Now, let us go to N. Please yeah. read out for us 
end. ANC and Ford Kenya shall have 30% share of the positions in the national government, including cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, ambassadors, high commissioners, heads of diplomatic missions, chairpersons of state corporations, directors of state corporations, and chairpersons and commissioners of constitutional commissions, provided that they are for sale 30% Share positions in the national government shall be shared equally between ANC and Ford Kenya. Who would be the appointing authority for those positions? Well, different, different, different office orders. Remember, some, some you're by, a, remember, you're a lawyer. Some by the president. Yes. Others by cabinet secretaries appointed by the president. And in others, fact, and all others, these and all others, facts. And others through public service commission by way of competitive. Now, but ANC and Ford Kenya were promised 30% share positions in all these positions. Indeed. Is that correct? Yes. Now, they have a 30% share. Yes. So, when you hold shares, what are you called? <laughs> okay. In a company, they are called shareholders. I do not know what they are called in a political party. I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about English. When you hold shares, what are you called? Shareholder. Thank you very much. So ANC and Ford Kenya are 30% shareholders in Kenya Kwanzaa, correct or not? They are 30%. You have just told us when you hold shares, you're a shareholder. Please, Mr. Mutu said, do not fear. Speak the English. Okay, they are thirty percent shareholders. They are thirty percent shareholders. Yes. Thank you. Let's go to what you call twenty-two. But not in a company. Mr. Mutu said, please answer the questions when he asked. Let's my, go to what you call twenty-two. My, my apologies. Let's go to what you call twenty-two. Please read paragraph the, the one that begins with pursuant. Pursuant to the principles of equity in national development and fair allocation of national resources. The Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance Administration shall endeavor to fulfill the following development obligations in the ANC and Ford Kenya strongholds of Western Kenya within the electoral period starting 2022 and ending in 2077 on a priority basis. Stop there. Please tell me, what are the ANC and Ford Kenya strongholds in Western Kenya? As, as a member of the coalition, please tell us. Come again. What are the Ford Kenya and ANC strongholds in Western Kenya? Western Kenya. Yeah. Read for us the counties. Oh, you want counties? Of course. That would be the county of Bungoma, mm -hmm. the county of Kakamega, mm -hmm. the county of Viga, mm -hmm. the county of... Uh, which other one? I am the questioner. You are the motion mover. Please answer. Uh, now, primarily those ones. The, these are priority projects for one region, correct? Yes. And this is a shareholders agreement, correct? This is a coalition agreement. Coalition agreement. It says shares. You just told us that here yourself. Because it has a heading. Now, let's, let's read the projects. Go to A. Completion of all existing and complete or stored bitumen road projects within the aforesaid counties is at 9th. August 2020. Let's stop. These are projects for one region, correct or not? Yes. Would you say, as you have alleged here, that by Kenya Kwanzaa focusing on one region, certain projects, what you are accusing the Deputy President of saying must be implemented, how does that cause disunity or ethnic strife? As a member of Kenya Kwanzaa, you are a member, you are the ones who say this. Tell us what you had in mind. This is in promotion of regional inclusivity of all regions in the national development. But we are talking about Western here. Can you please show me in this document where other regions are mentioned? Please go through it quietly. Take a minute. It ends at page 433. It starts at page 418. Show me one other region mentioned there by name in the whole document. This is a 
coalition agreement oh, please please mr motu say answer my question it is, is there any other region mentioned by name in this document it is there is no other region thank you very much thank you very much mr motu say please mr motu say please answer region focus to my question is there any other region not in this not in this document thank you very much that was my simple question let's go to page 434 Who are the signatories to this agreement? Several. Yes. Name them. William Ruto. Yes. Musali Amdavadi. Yes. Moses Wetangula. Veronica Maina. Simon Gikuru. And Kisantha Zwamalo. And it is uh, witnessed by who? Professor Kindiki. Do any of these persons bear the blame as you pile on the Deputy President? for causing ethnic strife by focusing on one region in a document? None of them has made pronouncements to the, the in similar, the document. similar to... They're in the document. This is, a, this is an agreement, and it has been implemented. And none of them has a motion on the impeachment. So let me understand this, and uh, be careful with the answer here. Yes. Your problem yes. with the deputy president is that he spoke out aloud what was written in the agreement that formed the government. I'm not, yeah, I'm yes not, or no? I'm, I'm, there is no way I have. No, yes or no, Mr. Mutuse. The Deputy President has, he not spoke said, about it. has not said the people of Western have not been given what. No, 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 no. He spoke for. about shares. We've read. He said everybody deserves their share. So it is no, in the agreement you've confirmed. But we have also to be faithful to the agreement. We have to be faithful to an agreement that gives shares, a coalition agreement. And, but we mustn't talk about it. The Deputy President is not accused of saying the people of Western Kenya have not gotten their share. Let us go back to your document, Mr. Mutusa. Please. Go back to page 7. Page 7 of volume? Page 7 of volume 1. Yes, there we are. A government is like a company. I did not say it is a company. I said it is like a company. In every company, there are shares, preferential shares and ordinary shares. When there's an AGM, non-shareholders do not vote or attend. When there are dividends to be divided, they're divided according to the number of shares. This is the truth. A government. And this is the government being formed here. So, Mr. Mutuse. Are you yes, saying that the problem is that the deputy president spoke out aloud what was written in an agreement deposited with the registrar of political parties and which formed the government? I am not saying that because there is nowhere in the coalition agreement we spoke about a company. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the agreement at page 435. Yes. Can you see that? Yes, I can see it. What is this agreement? Who are the parties to this agreement? In the Kwanza Coalition yes. and the Pamoja African Alliance Party. Yes. Otherwise abbreviated as PA. PA. Let's go, if you don't mind, yes. to page 438. Page 438. Yes. Yes. Um, can you see Article 7? Yes, I can see Article 7. Uh, please read what it says. Priority projects and programs. Mm -hmm. Upon winning the presidential election scheduled for 9th August 2022, the coalition administration shall ensure the following within the 2022-2027 development cycle. Do you want me to read all? Or, or let me make it short for you. Between Article 7A yes. and 7I, Yes. I want you to tell me whether any other region other than coast is mentioned in those priority projects. This is page 438 of volume one minute to check volume three. three. One minute to check a minute to read. No, no, I just uh, please uh, flip through in a second. It shouldn't be long.
Let me help you. There's none. All of them deal with cost. Can you see that? D is broad. It says involve local communities in the management, benefit sharing of the resources associated with the blue economy. Do you know what blue economy refers to? Yes, I do. Is there a blue economy in uh, Makweni? There is a blue economy in Kisumu. Very good. So this deals, other than the D, the rest of it is all cost. Well, reverse operational changes that have been carried out in the recent past, whose effect has been to relocate some of the core activities. Well, basically, cost, cost but also with a national, with no, a, with a national nature. You can read them for yourself, their cost. Now let's go with me to Article 8 at page 439. Page 439, Article 8. 8A. It says that Pa shall nominate a candidate for the Speaker of the Senate. Can you see that? Yes, I can see that. Page 439, paragraph 8A. You can yes. see that? Yes, I can see that. Did the candidate nominated by Pa in fact become the Honorable Speaker of the Senate? Indeed. He did. Let's go to Article 9. Please read Article 9A. Sharing of responsibilities in the national government upon the coalition winning the presidency of the Republic of Kenya in the general election scheduled for 9th, Pa shall submit one qualified nominee for appointment as principal secretary in accordance with the applicable law and procedure for appointment. So Pa was allocated one principal secretary position as its share of, gov of national government. Is that correct? According to this agreement, yes. Thank you. Let's go to a very interesting one. Go to paragraph 9C. Yes. Please read 9C. Pa shall be entitled to nominate other qualified persons for appointment for positions in the national government, including principal secretaries, ambassadors to high commissioners, chairpersons of state corporations, chairpersons of constitutional commissions, and other appointive offices commensurate with the number of members of national assembly and senators that will be elected on par ticket vis-a-vis -vis the total number of elected under the ticket of other coalition constituent parties. In simple English, when the number of the national government positions for PSAs, ambassadors, state corporations, and etc., including constitutional commissions and other appointing offices, will be allocated to par commensurate with the number of members of Assembly, National Assembly and Senators. Doesn't that mean that PA will be allocated positions based on how well it does in the election? Yes or no? Yes. Let us go to page 440 again and 441. Mm -hmm. Can see that? Yes, I can. Uh, again, you can see it signed by the party officials. Can you see that? Yes, I can see His Excellency the President, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Honourable Senator of the National Assembly, uh, my village mates and uh, Senator Veronica Maina, Simon Gekuru, Chrysanthas Wamalwa, Ibrahim Mutwafi, and Benedict Furaha. You can see that? Yes, I can. And you confirm this is an agreement of the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition? Yes, between Kenya Kwanzaa and PAR. Uh, Honourable um, um, Speaker, I'd now like to play a video uh, this is video number seven. number seven in the deputy president's documents. Hapa Moranga mumenepatia waziri ambaye anasimamia fedha yote ya Kenya. Anaitwa Professor Njuguna Ndungu. Hapa hapa Moranga mumenepatia chairman ambaye anakusanya ushuru yote Kenya. Anaitwa Bwana Maura anatoka hapa Kandara. Na nyinyi watu wa Moranga waziri wa maji ndio huyu yuko hapa. Kwa hivyo kama kuna watu shareholders wakubwa wa hii serikali ni watu wa Moranga. Na hiyo kazi zingine yote tutahakikisha kwamba inatimia. Stop that. Watu wa Moranga tumekubalia. Uh, Honorable Mutuse. Answer. Who was speaking in that video? President of the Republic of Kenya, William Ruto. What words did he use? What did he say to the people of Moranga? But he has appointed many of their locals into his government. Did he say, Nini watu wa Moranga ni shareholders wa Kuba wa Iserkali? Yes, he did. He did? Yes. And what, among other things, is one of the primary duties of the Deputy President? 
to deputize for the president. To assist the president? Yes. When the deputy president assists the president in talking about shareholders, how does that become an impeachable offense that does not attach to his principle, the president? That is not one of the functions assigned to the president by the constitution. It is one of the functions in your founding documents. So he's assisting him in that function. It's politics. What is the problem with that? He's the deputy party leader for order. Well, I wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know? Yes. Let me ask you. Before you filed this motion of yours, which my colleague um, Elisha Ongoya calls false, um, he used some other words. I can so remember them. You can remember them? Yes. Do you want to, now that you know what you have done, what are they? No, I can remember Ongoya's words. What are they? Now that, describe yourself. What has he used? What was it used? Go ahead. You can ask him for assistance. Now, um, when you say that the deputy president used words in support of something the president himself said, how does that become insubordination? I have not said that the deputy president used words in support of what the president said. So when the president says to the people of Moranga and not to the people of, say, Makweni, that Nyinyi ni shareholders wa kubwa wa serikali, is the president's words likely to incite ethnic hatred, violence? Rwanda, are the president's words likely to turn us to Rwanda, as you suggested? The president is not on trial. Sorry? The president is not on trial. Oh, I see. So his assistant, who no, assisted him do the thing. Counsel for the Deputy President, you have 30 minutes. I'm most obliged, uh, as Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mutu, yes. by assisting the President in something the President said, signed, and effected, most of these appointments, would you confirm with me that most of these appointments, for example, Principal Secretary, were made by the President? Yes, indeed. Cabinet Secretaries were appointed by the President? Yes, indeed. In fact, under the Constitution, does the deputy president have any power to appoint anybody? Uh, Sorry? Not expressly. No. If, 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 if it's by insinuation, tell me where, which law, what law well, are you talking about? The president can sign an instrument for him to deputize by way of signing an instrument of appointment. Sorry? Maybe the president can delegate some power of appointment. Are you aware of any power delegated in I this am, government? I am the, not. You, is there any you know of? I am not. You're not aware of any? Yes. Okay. Now, one of the other allegations yes. is that the Deputy President, in these utterances, thereby ensured that other regions did not have adequate um, development. Is that correct? That they have the potential to s discriminate. Potential? To discriminate. Let me ask you something, and this is a question not just about this allegation, about the companies you said, about all the things you've said here. Yes. Before you filed your motion, yes. did you write to the deputy president to ask him to explain himself? I was not under obligation to do so. You are not? So I did not. I want you to go with me to page 431. Page 431 of volume? Uh, volume one, the same volume we're reading here. Volume? Volume three. Page 431. Yes, page 431. I'm, 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 I'm on the, I'm on book. You're there, page 431. Page 431, yes. Can you see article 26? Article 26, yes. Yes. It deals with dispute resolution. Yes. Does Kenya Kwanzaa have a dispute resolution mechanism? I believe so. Did you attempt to invoke that mechanism? This is not a dispute. This is not a coalition dispute. Okay. It's, so it's not a coalition dispute. I, I asked this question because I asked you, did you ask the deputy president why he said any of these things? What the, whether he was acting on presidential instructions or why was he doing it? Did you ask? I did not. You did not ask him.
I did not. Did you ask him about these companies you are saying, what he does with them? I did not. You did not. Did you ask him about these companies, uh, these uh, parcels of land? Did you invoke your Article 35 rights to find out the truth? I did not. So you just jumped straight into these allegations with a motion that has animated the whole country with rumors. There is no requirement for me to write to the Deputy President to ask for any clarifications. Let me get this right. You're saying there was no obligation on you to verify the facts before filing the motion? I verify them with the necessary organs of the state. What are the necessary organs of the state you verify them with? Registration of companies. Yes. They are able to verify ownership with the business registration services. Yes. And, and others. All right, let's, let's go to another area now. I want you to go with me to page 497. Page 497. Of, of volume three. Please go with me to page 497. Go to page 497. Yes. You're with me there? Yes, I am. Uh, page 497, can you read at the top there what it's called? Kenya? Yes. North and Northeastern Development Initiative. Yes. NEDI. NEDI. Mission Aid, Aid, Aid Memoir. Yes. March 27th. Yes. To April 6th, 2023. As far as you're aware, does the Deputy President come from Northeastern uh, Kenya? No, he doesn't. He does not. If you go with me, you can see there's, there's, uh, this is about frameworks for how that area will be developed. But I want you to go with me, uh, first and foremost, to page 500 and page 501. 500 and 501. Yes. Yes. You can see that? Yes. Now, you can see there are 28 programs that were being undertaken under that program. Can you see that? Yes, I can. You can see that? Yes. Now, go with me then to page 502 and 503. 502 and 503? Yes. A list of participants. A list of participants. You can see that? Yes. The top 10 participants are from which office? Office of the Deputy President. And there are many other leaders of Kenya there. Can you see that? Page 502 and 503. And people from different communities, I can see. You can see that? Yes. I want you now to go with me to page 505. Yes. Can you see Annex 2 at the yes. top there? Active NEDI projects data. You can see that? Yes. It lists a name and then it has World Bank funding financing US million dollars. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Can you see NEDI share in US dollars? Yes. If you could get your assistant, as I lead you in another area, to do the totals and confirm that the total for the World Bank funding is $3.8 billion, the total World Bank funding for the country. OK? Your assistant there can help you with a computer, which is 514 billion Kenya shillings. OK? The net share, being supervised by the deputy president of that column, he can confirm, as we go on over something else, is $1.99 billion. The percentage of dollars allocated to the NEDI area is 52% of the national figure, okay? Would you say that is marginalization by the Deputy President's office? This is not a program by the Deputy President. It is, a, saying, program, it is a program by the government of Kenya. Fantastic. You, you raise a very important point. You know, government has no money. Government has taxpayers' money. Indeed. The question is how it uses it. Yes. It borrows money and taxes. Yes. This program is run by the Deputy President's office. Yes. So all I am asking is a program run by the Deputy President where 52% does not go to the region he comes from, is that likely to cause ethnic hatred? Is that discrimination? That's my question to you. No, it is not. Thank you very much. Go with me now to another area. Um, go with me to page 410. Page 410? Yes, 410. Honorable Mutuse. Yes, Council. You have said that the Deputy President acted beneath his office and um, violated his oath of office 
by um, criticizing the Director General of the National Intelligence Service. Yes. Uh, in public. Yes. And you say that is a terrible thing. Yes. It's the worst thing a, a deputy president can do. Yes. Okay. <coughs> now, if you go with me to the constitutional provisions that deal with security, I believe that's Article 2. The National Security Agencies. The National Security Council. Uh, not the National Security Council. Our national Security. Article 238. Please read, if you will, Article 239. Do you have the Constitution there with you? I do not have at the moment. Uh, I will lend you mine. Please read Article 239, sub Article 3. 239 sub article 3 national security organs in performing their functions and exercising their powers national security organs and every member of the national security organs shall not act in a partisan manner further any interest of a political party or cause or prejudice a political interest or political cause that is legitimate under this constitution thank you and so if a senior member of any security agency were to, if I could have back my constitution, if a senior member or any member really of uh, any security agency were to engage in that activity, that would be unconstitutional. Indeed. It would be worthy of criticism. Indeed. Now, Mr. Motuse, you are a lawyer and uh, uh, a leader in this country. Are you familiar with Kenya's first director of intelligence? Mr. James Kanyotu. Mr. James Kanyotu, I have heard much about him. Are you familiar with a saga in Kenya called the Golden Bug Commission? Yes, I am familiar with the Golden Bug Commission. Was Mr. Kanyotu brought before the commission to explain his role in that commission and his role in that saga? but not when he was in office. I'm asking, was he brought there? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. You're familiar with the former director of intelligence called Brigadier Gishangi? Yes, indeed. During the Waki Commission, was Waki, there was a Brigadier Gishangi called to give evidence before the Waki Commission to explain the role of the security agencies in post-election violence? Yes, in a commission, in a commission. In a commission, he was someone. In a commission, someone by a commission. Const a public commission. Public commission yes. that, was, uh, that was formed yes. as one to the laws of Kenya. Okay. Mm. Six. Now, you're with me at page 410. 410, yes. Um, you can see that is a newspaper article. Yes. What is the headline? This is... Uh, on the face of it, it can only be on the face of it, Mr. Motuse. We don't need to use uh, extra adjectives to explain obvious things. What does it say? I was, Ruto, I was locked out of Security Council meeting three years ago. Thank you. What is the date of that article at page uh, 410? It's on the extreme right. Mm, this is on 7th of July. Yes. Yes. Let's go to page 411. Page 4? 11. Yes. Please read that article in full. UDA presidential candidate William Ruto on Thursday said he was excluded from attending the National Security Council meeting three years ago. The National Security Council brings together the President, Deputy President, Defense, Foreign Affairs, and Internal Security Cabinet Secretaries, the Attorney General, Chief of Defense Forces, the Director of National Intelligence Service. Hmm? Ruto made the revelations while explaining his take on the ongoing extrajudicial killings in the country. Stop right there. When you played your video, you said that the problem was that the deputy president had discussed issues of security at a time when we were having what were called the Gen Z protests. Is that correct or not? That is one of the problems. That, that's one of the issues. Yes. Now, the 
Minister for Interior was before the National Assembly, last week I believe it was, or the other week, Yes. and said that 42 people died during those protests. You recall? I do not have that, but we take it as you put it. He said 132 people are missing. Okay. Are you aware that cases have been filed in court, including one where the Inspector General of Police was cited for contempt over allegations that the, the security agencies were abducting Kenyans? I am aware of the matters in court. Are you aware that during these protests, property of immense value was lost? Yes, I am aware. Did the President of the Republic of Kenya dismiss his entire cabinet as regards, as a consequence of those protests? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Are you aware, as a member of parliament, that the World Bank and the IMF, as early as January 2024, sent a document to the government, a public document available on the website, indicating that the introduction of the reforms in the Finance Bill 2024 would lead to protests. Are you aware of that? I am not aware. Now, if the World Bank and the IMF had warned the government in January 2024 that there would be protests, what should a responsible government have done in the intervening period? The government is not on trial. Regarding Ashagwa is... That is not my question. My question was, what should a responsible government and security agencies have done? I, I, I can't tell because I am not part of them. I'm not in the executive. I see. Let's go back to my article at page 411. There is a sentence beginning at the same time. Start there. At page 411, at the Sorry. same time, the DP also revealed that director of the National Intelligence Service no longer picks up his course. Mm -hmm. This, he said, has made him unable to play a key role in ensuring an end to the judicial killings in the country as well as the runaway insecurity in some parts of the country. Stop right there. Go to page 412. Page 412. In the middle, there's a sentence beginning with the words, he reiterated. He reiterated that the remarks he made in a campaign rally in Moyale that he will ensure... Read. Finish. That will ensure end to extrajudicial killings. So the deputy president at the time is criticizing the entire National Security Council and even disclosing, and Kenyans didn't know this, that the director of national intelligence no longer picked up his calls, and this is being made at a rally in Moyale. Between that and the deputy president addressing a national crisis that was foreseen, please explain to me what the difference between those two situations is. There is a huge difference. Number one, he begins by saying he has been locked out of National Security Council meetings. Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa has not said that he has been locked from National Security Council meetings. Number two, he goes ahead and says the Director General of the National Intelligence Service no longer picks his calls. Mr. Rigadi Gashagwa does not say the Director General of the National Intelligence Service no longer picks his calls. I see, but they're talking about the Director of National Intelligence. And our case is that... And they are discussing things the public don't know yet. Correct? Yes or no, Mr. Mutuse? The context is... No, different. yes or no, Mr. Mutuse? It's, it's distinguishable. Very, yes, very yes or no? The context is very different. Very good. Now, you say that at this speech, the Deputy President revealed secrets. What specific secrets did he reveal? He said, and the clip that was played, that he has been told in confidence mm. by officers of the National Police Service. I have been told in confidence mm. that the officers did not receive advance, advanced security information, intelligence on the planned protests. And this is subject to the Official Secrets Act. You can confirm this. The oath of office is that if issues are revealed to you in secrecy, you are not supposed to make them public. And when you made this allegation yourself, who are these officers you're saying made these secrets? G gave him these secrets? The deputy president, in the clip that we played, yes. from his own mouth, says, yes. I have received confidential information from officers of the National Police Service. Yes. 
Let us play for you a video here, um, uh, Honorable um, um, Speaker, video number six. We have the most incompetent Inspector General of Police, I think, in the world. The most incompetent in the whole world. His incompetence may not necessarily play out when things are working, but when things get to a head and you need some decisions to be made, I, I can tell you for sure, the gentleman we have as an IG cannot make any decision. The second one. If that could be repeated. <laughs> Mr. Tusa, you can stop there. Yes. Do you recall in the two years the deputy president has been in office? Yes. Where he called any public servant in the security sector Awache Ujinga? I don't recall. Not one. But I also know. I'm asking, as, I just asked you a simple question. This was question. on a campaign trail. I just asked a simple question. So I, you don't recall any? I don't recall. Yes. Do you recall him ever speaking in that tone to any officer? I don't recall. Thank you very much. And there's no motion. I'll hand over this um, uh, honorable speaker to my colleague, Mr. Victor Swanyaogeto. 